those of you who are joining us live, I'm so excited to chat with you today. Um, we have a nice small room here, which is great because it means as questions come up, you can ask away. So I have opened the chat box on the side and I know you'll have questions as I make my way through this conversation on becoming debt free. So if you want to just throw your questions right in the side um, in that little chat box, you can do that or write them on a sticky note in front of you. And then I'll open up to questions at the end and we'll just we'll chat about whatever you need to um, kind of figure out and um, and dig into after our conversation. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, for those of you who have never um, chatted with me before, maybe don't know who I am, uh, my name is Sierra. I'm originally from North Dakota. So I was born and raised in Fargo, um, lived in Grand Forks. So I lived in Fargo my whole life and then moved up to Grand Forks and lived there for a little under a decade. And we recently moved out to the Nashville, Tennessee area. So um, I am not complaining because it's 62 and beautiful here today. So I'm really excited, but I have quite a few clients back either in Fargo, Dickinson, Grand Forks, um, back in North Dakota, and all my family is there too. Um, so I obviously love um, the upper Midwest and I'm really excited just to chat with you guys today about becoming debt free in your business. Um, I'd love to know if you guys are able to throw in the chat box for me, if any or all of you have inventory. So if you're inventory based businesses, can you just throw um, a comment in the chat box? Let me know maybe where your business is at, what type of business it is, and if you have inventory, that would be super helpful for me. Um, we are recording this so that we can share it with those that signed up that weren't able to make it live, um, which will be really nice. And I'm going to share my screen with you. And we're going to start by diving into financials. Um, <laughs> this conversation about becoming debt free um, can be pretty intimidating because we know as we tackle our debt in our business that we obviously have to look at the numbers. Some of us love looking at numbers. Some of us would rather look at anything else in our business. Um, so I'm going to try to break the numbers down and make them as simple as I can today. For some of you listening here or listening to the recording, it might be a refresher in what you already know. And for some of you, you might not know what I'm talking about at all. So I'm going to keep it super simple um, and just dive in and, um, and want to meet you where you're at. So um, I do VIP days where I fly around the country and I'll spend a day with a small business owner in their business, putting together just a really um, aggressive profit plan, because at the end of the day, profitability is what matters. It doesn't matter how much we're making at the top and what that top line number says if we don't get to keep any of it. And so I'll, I'll fly in and I'll work with them one-on-one. -on -one. And I just worked with a client in Chicago who has an amazing business. They've been running it for well over a decade, probably 15 years or so. Um, flourishing business. They have a lot of profitability, great cash flow. And they didn't understand a profit and loss and a balance sheet, the difference between them. Um, and so you can have an awesome business and not really understand what the numbers mean and what they're saying. You can maybe have a bookkeeper, an accountant that prepares everything and sends it to you, and you might not know what it's telling you. And so I just want to normalize that um, because this client had a super successful business and had a lot of cash, like they were profitable. And just never had the time to stop and understand the number side. And so I want to make that normal. I want you to feel normal about that and not feel overwhelmed, intimidated, or silly. I know when I had my boutique business, um, which I grew to a seven-figure business as well, um, I was really good at selling, really good at buying, really great at publicity, those kinds of things. But I didn't understand cost of goods sold and I really could not get a handle on like, what is a balance sheet? Um, and I felt really silly a lot of times and stupid, especially as the business grew and I was really, you know, successful from the outside looking in that I should know these things. And so then it got to a point where I didn't want to ask because I felt like I should know it. And I just want my clients to always know that wherever we're at is where we can start and it's, it's all okay. So that's what we're going to be doing today. All right. So a couple of boutiques. Awesome. So you definitely... Um, have that. And then Buffalo City Escape in Jamestown. Awesome. And no inventory. Okay, Courtney. So we're going to talk about inventory. Um, if you don't have inventory, then you just, you know, we'll talk about mats and subs instead, material subcontractors. It kind of fits into that inventory line. But at the end of the day, um, really, it's all about net profit when we're paying off our, our debt. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to share my screen here. Let's see if I can get um, creative with 
how I pull this up. Okay, so I want to Where is it? There it is. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to actually start with a PL. Again, if this is a refresher for you, just count it as a refresher. And if this is brand new information, take some notes and you can always ask questions because it will be um, kind of rapid fire here. So before we put together a plan to pay off our debt, we really have to understand why we are in debt and if debt is good or bad, where debt shows up and how it plays a role in our cash flow. So we're going to start with that last point, how it plays a role in our cash flow. So this is just a really super simple sample of a profit and loss statement. So a profit and loss or a PL is always going to look at the history. It's always going to be looking in the rearview mirror. So when you look at a PL, you're going to look at a period of time, but it's always in the past. It's never going to show you where you are today. So you can't pull a PL and see how much cash you have in your bank account. It's not going to show you that. A PL is going to show you what you made in sales what you spent and what's left over. That's pretty basic, right? So we have five different areas on the PL. The first one is gonna be our income or our sales. If you sell inventory, it's gonna be up there. If you sell services, products, um, anything you sell, any income is gonna show up at the top. And then the next section here, cost of goods sold, um, is going to be the, cert the second section on our um, profit and loss statement. If you have inventory, it's going to show up as cost of goods sold. So it's the cost of the inventory that you sold to make the sales. It's not the cost of what you just went out and purchased. So if you do have inventory and you go to market and you spend $10,000 at market, that bill is not going to show up on your P&L. That inventory cost will show up on the profit and loss once the sales were made. So once I sell 10 of these sweaters and they walk out my door and I get dollar bills in exchange for 10 of these sweaters, the cost of these sweaters show up on the P&L. And that's really important to know because your inventory value is going to show up on your balance sheet. The cost of what you sold shows up on the P&L. If you don't have inventory, materials and subcontractors will typically fall here in this section. Um, so materials would be, you know, the cost of shingles, the cost of roofing nails, if you're a roofing business, um, you know, if you are a service-based business, you don't have a lot of materials, but you have a lot of subcontractors, perhaps, you know, like me at coaching and consulting, I have people that help me with my coaching mastermind. Um, I have people that help me with my social media. Those are subcontractors. That's what's going to show up here in this section for me. So sales minus either cost of goods sold and or materials and subcontractors is going to leave you with your gross profit. When this gross profit line um, here on this sample P&L says 2503 $2,503, that's your gross profit. That number is what we're going to really focus on as we put together a plan to get your debt paid off. So I want you to like make a mental note of that. That gross profit is really, really important. Then the next section on a P&L is going to be all of your expenses. And these are fixed and non-fixed expenses. So things like advertising, marketing, um, credit card fees. So like you swipe someone's credit card, that fee would show up as an expense. Your rent, payroll, travel, buying yourself a Starbucks, buying your team members a, a meal. All of that is fixed and non-fixed expenses. That's going to show up in the expense section. We do not account for any debt here. So there's never going to, you're never going to see debt payments. You would see interest in expense, but you're not going to see debt payments and you aren't going to see any inventory costs. Okay. In the expense section. So again, we have our sales, then we subtract our cost of goods sold and, or our materials and subcontractors, which leaves us with the total um, gross profit. Then from the gross profit number, we're going to subtract any expenses we have fixed or non-fixed. And at the end of the day, what we're going to be left with is our net income. This is this number at the bottom that I just highlighted in blue. That's our net income. And that's the number that we're going to use to pay our debt off. So it's really, really important that we start to build and grow our net income. Okay, I want to pop over to the balance sheet um, and show you the second part of a financial look so that we understand where our debt would show up. Okay, so on a balance sheet, we have two separate sections. We have our asset section at the top and our liability section at the bottom. So assets are awesome. We want a lot of assets and some businesses are really asset heavy. So if you think of um, like I'm working with a client in Nebraska, 
um, that has like, you know, big, um, like grain equipment, trucks, you know, really heavy equipment, they're going to have a lot of assets, right? A lot of things that they could turn into cash if they had to go and sell them. Um, an inventory-based business, like a boutique, you're not going to have a lot of assets. You know, you're going to be really asset light because you have your inventory, maybe some furnitures and fixtures, maybe you have a mobile boutique, um, but we just don't have a lot of assets. So some businesses are naturally asset heavy and some don't have a lot of assets. Either way, we want the asset section of our balance sheet to be really healthy, meaning we have a lot of cash, we have a good chunk in our savings account, we have our assets accounted for accurately. So this is something that I see done inaccurately quite often is when a business buys something that's actually an asset, they expense it out. So for example, let's say I went and bought a printing press because I'm a screen printer. So I bought a printing press for t-shirts, like a screen printing machine, and it cost $10,000. Instead of putting it on my balance sheet because it's an asset, I don't know any better. And so I actually turn in the receipt and it shows up over on my profit and loss and shows up as an expense and then really brings my net profit like negative or way down, right? We want to put that piece of equipment on the asset side, on the balance sheet side, because I can turn that into cash. It's a value to my business and it's not an expense. So um, furniture, fixtures, things like that. Trademarks can show up as an asset. Um, if you have a big, you know, a website, a big software program that you develop, that could be an asset. Think about like anything, if you went to sell your business that you could find value and you could sell to a potential buyer, that's an asset, okay? So things like tape and paper and, you know, tagging guns and, you know, things like that, those are expenses, but bigger items are going to be assets. And then in the liability section, this is where you're going to find your debt. So you can see down here that this little um, test boutique ABC, this um, sample balance sheet, this business has a couple credit cards. Those show up as liabilities. It looks like they also have um, a couple notes payable to me. So I set this up as like a test boutique, right? Um, a sample company. So if I loan my business money, I can set up a loan payable back to me or a note payable back to me. So it looks like, you know, $9,700 um, is a note payable back to me. And then there's another payable back to me. And there's another payable to me. Maybe my husband put money in or a family member, any kind of debt, SBA loans, any of that's going to show up on the liability side. So what's really important for all of you as business owners to remember is that businesses with a strong balance sheet can weather any storm. So, you know, a lot of crazy stuff happening with the economy and with shopping behavior and the rise in product pricing, you know, for us as, as business owners, um, and we can feel a little nervous, right? We can feel a little uneasy. And so it's our responsibility to focus on building a strong balance sheet because when storms, economic storms come, businesses with strong balance sheets, meaning they have a lot of assets and very little to no liabilities, are the ones that are going to make it. They're going to have opportunity to buy, opportunity to take advantage of, you know, other businesses that have closed and be able to come in and help service new customers. All of those opportunities are going to arise if the balance sheet is strong. So a profit and loss is going to show you your past. A balance sheet is going to show you a snapshot in time. So I can pull this. I did this one as of October 25th, 2022. And as of that day, this is how much cash I had. This is how much debt I had. This is how much inventory I had. Okay. So that's what we're talking about when we are working through the financials. Now, um, when you find yourself making a lot of cash, so you have a lot of sales, so you have a lot of cash coming in. Maybe you have an awesome, you know, you do a pop-up event at a rodeo. I have a client in South Dakota that does um, big, she goes to rodeos and does pop-ups with her inventory and she does really, really well. Okay. So she has a lot of cash coming. Maybe you have a business model like that and you have all this cash that deposits Tuesday morning. You're like, this is so exciting. And by Thursday, it's all gone and you don't know where it went. Um, Often it's because we don't understand what's going on with our financials. We don't understand what's happening with the inventory moving out and what's happening with debt payments that we might have, right? So because debt payments don't show up on a P&L, um, we can find ourselves in that trouble. So let me actually, I'm just going to pop this up one more time. I want to show you the P&L here and just give you an example of if you have debt and you're finding yourself constantly short of cash, 
even though your PL might look really great, like it's never in the red, why you might have that trouble. So this um, profit and loss example is March through July. This is a super small business, um, March through July of 2020. And they had total sales in those um, several months of $4,400, $4,450. Okay. And their total expenses, very small. They live lean and mean 350 bucks. So at the end of the day, they had a net profit of $2,100. And so you would look at this and say, wow, they're a profitable business. This is awesome. But if this business, let's say for that same period of time, had $3,000 worth of debt payments, maybe an SBA loan, maybe a, you know, a local um, loan from their local bank, maybe a couple of credit cards that they were paying off of, maybe a Shopify or a capital loan of some sort, and all of those loan payments equaled, let's say $3,000 for that same period of time, they'd actually be negative cash flow. So that's why if you are finding yourself like, oh, I just do these big events and I have so much money or my sales keep increasing or my business keeps growing, but I never have the same amount of money in my bank account. Like I don't have $2,000 in my bank account. Where did it go? Most likely you have debt and you're not accounting for that. And so that's why it's super important to really understand how the financials work and talk to each other, that things are accounted for accurately, and then that we plan to have maximum gross margin. So remember at the beginning of this call, I said that gross, gross margin was super important. That number, the, the wider we can grow that, the deeper we can grow the gross margin, the more excess money drops to the bottom of the profit and loss, which gives us more cash to pay down the debt. Okay, so I'm going to work through just or kind of walk through this workbook that I have here and just kind of spell out some options for getting that debt paid off um, for a place that you can focus um, your attention to really get the results that you're looking for when it comes to consolidating or eliminating the debt that you might have. Um, so first of all, I want you guys to remember that every single number is a piece of the puzzle of our business. Um, so I like to think of like, a real actual puzzle. So I just went to um, Florida over Christmas with my family and I like to bring a puzzle along. We have a really low key week where we watch movies and we go for walks on the beach and social media fast and just really like read books and spend time. And so um, this is the once a year when I do a puzzle. So I brought a puzzle this year. And when you open up a box with a puzzle, puzzle pieces and you dump it out on the table, at first glance, it can be super overwhelming, right? Because everything's like right side up and inside out and nothing goes together. And you're like, oh my goodness, they're all the same color, right? So the first thing we do is we prop up the cover of the box because that has a picture of what we're creating with these puzzle pieces, right? So the first thing I did was prop up that box cover. So I could look and say, okay, what am I creating? What is this supposed to look like at the end of the day? So I want you to write this down somewhere on your sheet and we won't take the time for this now, but I want you to take some time this week to sit down and create again, the picture for where you want your business to be. Because we all start with a lot of dreams and a vision and we're super excited about this business we're creating. Um, and I don't know the history of your businesses. Maybe some of you have been doing this for 20 years. Some of you, maybe two months. Um, but we all go into business with this great idea of what we want our business to be, what we want to accomplish, how we want to contribute to our communities and the income to our families. And then busy stuff happens and hard things happen and employees leave and we can't find anyone to hire and prices rise. We get super scrambly and we take on debt and then we feel overwhelmed. We can't sleep at night, right? All these things happen and we start to lose the picture that we were creating with our business. So we need to prop up that cover again and take a look, just take a minute and take a look at what we're trying to create. So I want you to take some time this week to just sit back and like outline again, like what's the purpose? Where do I want to go? How many hours do I want to be working every week in my business? Like, what do I want to contribute? What do I really want for a salary? You know, maybe you're suddenly finding yourself with five different revenue streams and you're like, why am I doing all this stuff when what I really loved was this part of the business, right? We take on complexity as we grow. So we prop up the picture. And then the next thing we do is we start to flip over the pieces of the puzzle, right? We got to get them all upright so we can see all the colors, all the shapes, and we can start to put them together in an organized way. So we flip over those pieces of the puzzle. And that's what we're doing today with the financials, like flipping them over and saying, okay, here's what a profit and loss means. Here's what a balance sheet is saying about my business. Here's how those two things work together. Debt shows up here, 
income shows up here, cost of goods, margin, here's how they work together. We're just flipping those pieces over. So when you start to get super overwhelmed with all the numbers in your business, I want you to just take a breath, look back at this exercise that you're going to have done um, where you lay out the picture. So you're going to prop your box up, your proverbial box, and then you're just going to start to flip over those pieces again, looking at every single piece, understanding that they're all a piece of the puzzle. Each number is a piece of the puzzle. Then the next thing we want to do is we want to start to find what the straight edges, the square corners, right? Because that gives us a framework. And so um, we're going to talk about using profit first today um, as our framework. So a way for us to create a frame to this picture we're trying to create with our business. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Parkinson's law before, but Parkinson's law tells us that we will consume or eat whatever is in front of us. This is not like, you know, an accounting law or this is not Sierra's idea. This is an actual law. So Parkinson's law says you're going to consume or eat whatever's in front of you. If you have a big old beautiful piece of cheesecake in front of you, chances are you're going to eat it all. So if you want to eat less cheesecake, you need to cut yourself a smaller slice, right? A smaller glass of wine, a smaller cup of coffee, whatever's in front of us, we want to consume. And the same thing happens with our money, you guys, the same thing happens with our money. So if we're running our business off of whatever's in front of us, we're going to keep consuming it. And that's when we find ourselves short on cash continually. So if we have one bank account where all of our sales dump, all of our cash dumps into that one bank account, chances are we're going to spend it, right? Like, oh my goodness, I have all this money in my bank account. This is awesome. I can go to market like I wanted to. I can hire this new person. I can hire a social media manager. I can buy all the pretty things for my store. We can do all these things until we can't because there's no longer any cash in front of us. And we're in this vicious cycle of now I need to go sell like crazy in order to get more money in order to pay the bills that I've committed to. So if we want to spend less money, we have to have smaller plates. Okay. So Parkinson's law says, whatever's in front of you, you're going to eat. If you want to eat less, have a smaller plate. So if we want to consume less money, we just need to have smaller plates. And that's really what Profit First does is it divides up our money into small and equal plates, sometimes unequal plates, but smaller plates so that we consume for the purpose of what needs to be consumed, what is in each of those buckets. Okay. So how do we use Profit First then to control our debt? First of all, if you have inventory, Profit First is going to help you with your inventory. Um, so I'm a Profit First certified coach, and I want to tell you that Profit First can be a bit overwhelming if you read the book or like listen to the audiobook. Um, and so I'm going to break it down super simple for you. I want you to think about it as a cash management system, not an accounting system. Okay, so we're still going to use typical accounting, P&L, balance sheet, cash flows, all those things. QuickBooks for accounting or whatever you use, Quicken. Um, but Profit First just helps you manage your cash. So if you have inventory, we're going to set up an inventory account. And before we do anything else with our money, we're going to create an inventory account where we're going to move the cost of goods from the previous, let's say, week of sales. We're going to move that amount over to our inventory account. In other words, we're taking a little bit of that cash and we're putting it in a smaller plate so that we always have money to buy new inventory, right? Because if you are an inventory-based business, you have to make sure that you have inventory to create more cash, to create more profit, to buy more inventory, to create more profit. It's very important. If you run too low on inventory, you have nothing to sell or you end up clearancing it out, right? To get some cash in and then your margins are super low and you don't have enough to pay your bills and then it's this horrible, vicious, vicious cycle. So if you have inventory, you set up an inventory account. If you don't, that's okay. Then we're just gonna move down to the next accounts you're gonna set up for your profit first. So you would set up an, in, you already have an income account. So where all the money is jumping in, if you're inventory based, you're gonna set up an inventory account. And then you're gonna have an owner's comp account, a tax account and a profit account. And this is what's gonna help you pay off your debt, okay? So let's kind of dissect what each of these is. Owner's comp, this is you. So I hope each and every one of you takes a paycheck, but guess, you know, chances are, we don't, or we don't take the paycheck that we should be taking because as business owners, which I know all too well, uh, we pay everyone else first, right? Everyone else gets taken care of and we are the last to get taken care of and we're scared to spend the money on ourselves. And so an owner's comp account is an account where we make sure that before you put all this money in a big bowl or in a big plate and consume it all, we pull a little bit aside for owner's pay. 
Then we're going to pull a little bit aside for taxes. Now, this is going to be like federal tax. So I don't know about you, but I remember back in my retail days, I don't know how many times we would pay our um, sales tax quarterly. How many times sales, I was like, oh, you know, I'll make the money by the time sales tax is due, whatever, whatever. And then sales tax would be due and I'd be sweating because like now I need to find thousands of dollars to send in to North Dakota for sales tax because I hadn't saved it, right? Same thing can happen at the end of the year if our, we're profitable and our accountant is like, hey, Siri, you did an awesome job. Your business was profitable. You now owe X amount in federal taxes on the profitability of your business. And we have to go borrow from our 401k or from you know a friend or family member or whatever um, to pay that. So our tax account is going to be an account where we just pull a little bit off. It's the government's money. It's not ours anyway. We pull it off and we save it before we spend it. Then next we have our profit account. This account's gonna be really important when it comes to a debt payoff plan. So at first, we're just gonna pull a little bit off and we're gonna put it into our profit account and we're gonna let that money accumulate for a quarter at a time and then take that chunk of money and start to aggressively chunk out and pay out our debt. And then the balance of everything is gonna be what we pay our total expenses with. So if I had a whiteboard, um, I have a whiteboard behind me, but it would be kind of awkward if I pulled it up here while I was sitting. So if you guys can just kind of mentally think about this or you can even scratch it out on your paper, let's just put some numbers um, to pen and paper here if you guys wanna write these down. So let's, let's say $50,000 is what I made in sales last month. So if you can write $50,000 on your um, paper in front of you. Then let's say my cost of goods sold was $20,000, okay? And if you don't sell inventory, let's say materials and subcontractors together, 20 grand, okay? So you have 50,000 minus 20,000. That's going to leave you a gross margin of $30,000, okay? This gross margin number is what it, it's how it would show up on a PL. It would be called gross margin. In profit first terms, we call this your real revenue because that top line number, while it's a vanity number and we love saying like, oh my goodness, I had a half a million dollar business. I did five, you know, $50,000 last month. That really does us no good if the numbers underneath it are not falling in place like they should, okay? So our real revenue or what we really get to divvy up and use in our business is the gross margin, that 30,000. And that's why I said on the PL that gross margin was so, so important. So you're gonna take that 30,000 and you're gonna divide it four different ways. And this is that idea of like, we're not gonna say like, oh my goodness, I have so much money in my account. I have 50 grand. I can just spend it on whatever. That's where we fall into trouble. And then we end up taking on debt because really of that 50, 20 has to go right back to buy new inventory or to pay off our contractors, right? 30 is what we get to play around with. And of that 30, it needs to go in different directions too. So we would take, if we're starting profit first for the very first time, I'm just going to give you really small percents to start with. So we would take 2% of that and we'd move it over to your owner's comp account. Now, if you're already paying yourself, maybe you're paying yourself more than 2% of gross margin. Um, you don't need to mess with that. Like you can pay yourself, you know, what you've set up as your W2 or, you know, however you take distributions or whatever. This is just for the sake of conversation. Okay. So 2% to owner's comp. We're going to put 2% over to our tax. Again, we're going to grow this eventually, but we don't want to shock our system right away because we've never saved and we never move money around. And suddenly we're just going to put 15% over and save it for taxes when we have it because we have to work in conjunction with like narrowing down and, and working through our expenses and paying our debt off. And then as we do that, we'll increase our owner's comp and increase our tax and our profit. So the next account would be profit account. Let's move 2% of this real revenue over to our profit account, which is a savings account. And then the balance of that, so 100% minus six is 94, 94% is gonna go into our operating expense account. And this is the, the account that we buy everything out of. We, we write payroll checks, we go travel, we um, pay our rent, we pay our utilities, our OPEX. And so what we'll start to do is to focus on flipping over the pieces of the puzzle and focusing on building out the picture that we want to create with our business. So as we take that real revenue and we start to divide it out. So before we go and spend a bunch of money, we move the $20,000 over to our inventory account if we have an inventory-based business. Um, if we don't, then we don't move that. And then we take the 30,000 real revenue or gross margin and we divide it. So before we do anything else, we just divide it. We pull a little bit off, 2%. I'm gonna put it over in my owner's comp. 
2%, I'm going to put it in my tax savings. 2%, I'm going to put it in my profit account. And then the rest of it, I can see if that lines up with my business budget that I've created at 94% of my gross margin. And if it doesn't, then I need to start cutting some spending, right? And if I have excess, I'm going to use that to aggressively pay down debt as well. So as you create your debt payoff plan, the beginning of that payoff plan is going to come from the OPEX. So at first, you're just going to keep making those debt payments from your operating expense because that has the most of the cash in it, right? That 94%, that big amount of money in it. And then as you start to get leaner and meaner with your business and follow your business budget and make sure that you're getting maximum margin on all your inventory, that you're living tight with your contractors and you're not overspending on the help that you have, that you're getting the best deals on your materials, right? As you start to really hone in on that gross margin and you can grow that gross margin, you're going to have excess money that you can start to put towards your debt. Now, if you have a capital loan of any sort, I want to talk about how that fits in because those are nasty little beasts um, and they can be a bit confusing. So by a capital loan, I mean like a Shopify loan, PayPal loan, Stripe loan, right? We all get those emails where it's like, you qualified without even talking to anyone to get $20,000 today in your bank account. And we're stressed out and we need to buy inventory or we need to hire or whatever we need to do. And so we say, sure, we hit the little button. They throw money in our bank account that day. We feel super good until tomorrow morning when they start to take that money right off the top. So if you have a capital loan, the way that I would look at it is this. So I want you to write these numbers out for me because this is going to make a little bit of a difference. So $50,000 again in sales. Most capital loans are going to be like around the 10%, right? They're going to pull it off the top. So we need to calculate that for that before we look at our real revenue. So you're going to take 10% of just saying that your capital loan is 10% every day of your sales, 10% from the 50. So $5,000, you're going to subtract that first. So now we're down to $45,000 in sales. Then you're going to subtract your $20,000 mats and subs or co cost of goods sold, which is going to leave you with $25,000 in gross margin instead of $30,000, right? It leaves you less real revenue because Shopify pulled that money or Stripe pulled that money right away. So you have $25,000 in gross margin. And then that's what you're going to divide into your little buckets. And then make sure that your operating expense is let, you know, sitting lean and mean with the budget that you've created. And then you're going to aggressively work to build maximum gross margin, maximum net profit by cutting expenses and living lean and mean and increasing your sales and increasing or decreasing your cost of goods sold, right? So you have maximum margin and then excess money is going to go and you're going to chip away as fast as you can at that capital loan because that really stunts your cash flow. Get rid of that because you can see once you don't have that capital loan, you're back to 30,000 in real revenue to divvy up. And then what you've been putting against that capital loan, you can move over kind of, you know, like what Dave Ramsey talks about, right? Like the snowball effect. So you focus on the most aggressive, nastiest, highest interest, you know, worst loans that you have first. And then you created this discipline to paying those off. Then you take that amount once that's paid off and you start pushing it out towards your other debt. Now the profit account where you save that 2%, um, I always like to have that build for a quarter at a time. And then you take what's accumulated in there up to like 99% of it and you can chip away at your debt. And once your debt is gone, you've created this awesome habit of what? Focusing on the right things, flipping over the pieces of the puzzle, putting the square pieces together first. Now you've created this pattern of saving and no longer does that profit have to go towards debt. It can go to you as a business owner. So this can become, you know, your reward bucket, your distributions, expansion, um, savings for a rainy day. And you can just build that profit. Um, I am going to give you the percent of where Profit First wants you to um, eventually end up so that you have something to work towards. And if any of you are like, hey, this sounds awesome, but I don't think I can do this by myself, you can connect with me. We can jump on a call and I can talk to you about creating like a specialized plan for your business. Um, but if you want to focus on this and do this yourself, here's where I'd like you to eventually end up with your percentages. So you want to be at 5% no more than 5% ever for your profit account, okay? So your profit account's gonna eventually get up to 5%. Your tax account, eventually you're gonna be saving 15% of all your gross margin over to your tax account. And you might not have a tax liability that's that much at the end of the year, 
then this just becomes a savings account. You can do what you want with the money. So you get to the end of the year, you don't need it. You oversaved. That's not a bad problem to have. So eventually 15% there. Um, depending on the size of your business, um, usually around 30% of your gross margin is going to be your owner's comp pay. So that's kind of a place where you can see like, where should I be salary wise for the size of my business around 30% and then 50%. So the balance of that gross margin is going to go to operating. So as you start to look at these numbers in your business and you look at like what your debt is, what your net profits falling at, um, where you are in OPEX, like if you're running 99% of your gross margin is going to operating expense, we need to shave some of those expenses down, right? We need to eventually work towards 50% so that we're saving and we're taking our profit first um, as business owners after our debt is all paid off. All right. Um, I know that's a lot. So I would love to just open it up for questions. If you guys have questions, thoughts, ideas, anything you'd like to throw at me, um, there's nothing in the chat box here question-wise, but um, feel free to, um, to throw a question in there or um, raise your hand on Zoom and I can unmute you as well. I think I am, um, I think I'm a co-host. Um, and if not, then I will just look, um, I'll look in the chat box. Oh, thanks, Melissa. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, you know, what we want to always do, I think in our businesses, because we're problem solvers, right, is we want to just dive in and fix a problem. But when we don't understand the root of the problem, it's really hard to fix it or to fix it long term. And so we want to make sure our balance sheet is strong and that we're paying off all of our debt. But we need to understand where the debt came from in the first place. And so when we back up and we can look at a profit and loss and say, oh, like my margin's 40%. There's no way I can even cover my expenses with my gross margin. We could keep taking on debt, like more Shopify loans, more cash, and it feels good in the moment, but we're always gonna be behind the eight ball. And so we have to back up and look at, okay, what's going on on my P&L? Like, what do my sales look like compared to my expenses? What do my sales look like compared to what they cost? Like the inventory costs, fix that and then we focus on the right things and we can start to get a plan to pay off the debt and never go into debt again, right? Um, yeah, I totally, I was not a, I'm not a CPA, I'm not a bookkeeper, I'm not accountant. Um, I just know in my businesses when I was finally shown what the financial really meant and like how I could control what was happening, it gave me so much confidence. I remember leaving a banking meeting towards the end of my um, retail um, career, if you will. Um, and I was like, you know what? I know questions they should have asked me that they didn't even know to ask. Like that's how confident I was in my numbers and my business. And it's an amazing feeling to feel like I know what's going on. And maybe the picture is really ugly right now, but I know why. And now I can make a plan to fix it. So I totally get that, Melissa. Like, you know, we're not. And then when we go to get help, people speak in such a crazy language that we're like, I don't know what you're saying. And I feel silly to ask. So um, yeah, so I'm glad it was helpful. Okay. So Mindy, it sounds like awesome. You are already doing profit first. So I'm so excited. Okay. So currently doing 1% profit, 15 tax, 20 owners comp, 64 open. My OPEX is where I'm taking all the expenses and also inventory. Okay. I have debt though. So the debt is coming out of OPEX as well. Yep. Do I need to change my percentages to be able to pay off the debt first? Like maybe I'm taking too much. Okay. That's a great question, Mindy. Okay. I would say yes. So if you, especially if you have aggressive debt, like if you have any type of capital loans, um, I would cut your owner's comp for now and get rid of that aggressive debt. And then you can go back. I wouldn't stop paying yourself. Like I want you to take some sort of paycheck, even if it's only a hundred dollars a week, like don't stop paying yourself entirely because there's something so demoralizing as entrepreneurs when we don't get rewarded for our work. We have to be paid for the work that we're doing. And I think we've all been there where we've worked for free for way too long and we resent our people, we resent our customers, we resent our business. And I don't want you to do that. So I wouldn't stop all, all the way, but perhaps you look and say, just play around with it, um, Mindy. Okay, if I did 20 or 10% owner's comp and I could put the other 10% towards debt, how quickly could I get that taken care of? Because that debt, either the aggressive like Shopify capital kind of PayPal, that kind of debt, it's like wrecking your cash flow. Or even if you don't have that kind of debt, maybe the interest 
is costing you so much, you know, so you're taking a paycheck of $2,000 a month, but your interest is costing you $2,000 a month. So if you could say a thousand dollar a month paycheck and put that thousand extra thousand dollars over against debt and get rid of that interest expense and free up cash flow, that might be so much better. So, um, I would also say with debt, like, I know it feels really good to be debt free, but don't get so aggressive that you cannibalize your business. So let me give you an example. Um, I have a client that had a ton of capital debt and she had all sorts of debt, like a combination. And our goal, we just started working together last October. And her goal was like, first get rid of the capital debt. Cause that's just eating cash flow. And so we paid off like 6,000 of it in six weeks. Like we just went, we made a plan, put this together with her. We went after it aggressively. Um, now she has another capital loan that she's going to hit next, get that paid off. Um, and then worked on our fix on our fixed loans. And one of it is like an SBA loan with like super low interest, really small payments stretched over time. And I was like, okay, once we aggressively knock out the credit cards, the capital loan, all the high interest stuff, let's chill out for a second. Let's stabilize the business, keep making that minimum, nice, clean, easy, super, super comfortable SBA uh, payment. Let's not knock that out. Let's use your extra cash then to start buying better deals on inventory, to build up your margin, to produce more cash flow and more net profit. And then we can decide in a year or whatever amount of time um, if we want to just pay that, that other loan off if there's no penalty, right? So if you have really like easy loans that are stable, they're stretched over time, really low interest, don't get so crazy and excited with paying off your debt that you cannibalize the opportunity to use good cash to build your business. So get rid of the aggressive icky stuff um, and then settle in and just, you know, put that, that super simple payment. Like Mindy, you would just have that keep coming out of your OPEX, you know, just have that as part of, you know, operating expense, like that payment in that budget and then um, build the gross margin and then decide what you want to do so that you're not taking chunks of money and paying off something that's actually being a bit helpful to you, if that makes sense. Those are super good questions. Anyone else? And Mindy, hopefully I explained that well for you too. Perfect, good. All right. Um, for those of you who have inventory, I want to remind you that your inventory, there's a couple of things I love to say to my clients. Your inventory is cash on hangers and cash in boxes. So treat it like that. Do not get attached to your inventory. Move it, turn it, burn it. It serves a purpose and that's to build your business. So, and build your profitability. Use your inventory to create profit and keep more cash, okay? I also tell my inventory-based business owners to remember that inventory might have been what got you into debt, but inventory is what can get you out of debt. So even though inventory-based business owners are really, I mean, businesses are really hard, like, right? It's this whole beast, this cash-eating monster. If managed properly and really watched, the margin that inventory can create for you gives you a lot of control over the bottom line. So I want you to leave really encouraged with that thought too. And then for those of you who don't have inventory, this is awesome because you probably have really great margins um, and you're already ahead of the game. So really focus on watching your time. You know, if you trade time for dollars because you're a consultant or a coach, that kind of business, you know, be really strict with your time, um, be really efficient with your time because that's your biggest asset. Just like inventory is the biggest asset for an inventory business, your time is your biggest asset. So you want to be really smart with, with that and the margins that you create with your time. Okay, well, that's what I have for you guys today. Um, I'm sure Catherine will let everybody know where to connect with me. Otherwise, you can always go to my website too, um, sierrastockland.com. If you want to jump on a consult call um, to dig into building your own profit or debt payment plan, um, the best way to do that is to go to the website, go to the VI, there's a VIP, like one-on-one -on -one coaching, click on that. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, my calendar links down there and you can click on um, a calendar um, appointment and we can just jump on a, a call and chat. But I love that Catherine is bringing all of this um, to businesses in North Dakota and really around the States. If anyone wants to, else wants to jump in, um, just, I know when I was a business owner, I would have loved having opportunity to learn these kinds of things instead of learning them the hard way. So um, I think it's so nice that she is definitely um, doing this for all of us.
Oh yeah, Melissa, drop shipping. Um, that's something too. Let me just um, mention this because if you do drop shipping and you want to use Profit First, I would set up a drip. They call them drip accounts in Profit First, but another account for drop shipping dollars because you really want to be careful that you don't spend other people's money because it is a liability until the the um, sale is completed before you know. So example. Let's say these sweaters, I did a pre-order. I'm going to drop ship them. And I sold a hundred and I collected all the money for them. But then um, I went and spent it because I was like, oh, this is so exciting. I made so many, you know, made so much money in sales today. And then the vendor who had these had a problem. Their warehouse burnt down and they have none of them and they can't send them. And now I need to refund my customers, but I spent all their money. That's not good. Okay. Super scary. So, um, you can set up another account if you want. I have a couple of customers that do their own inventory and drop shipping. Um, I have a, a customer who does like furniture. So they outfit, um, or a client, she outfits stores like, I'm uh, not store, excuse me, homes. And so she'll be holding on to inventory or people prepay for their inventory, but then their house isn't built, you know, so all this, this cash is sitting. Um, and so we just set up a separate account where she can hold those funds until the transaction's completed. And then she would move them into her gross margin and divvy up that money. So be super smart if you do drop shipping that you're really watching too and you're not using that to aggressively pay off debt and then you have something wrong and then you have no money to fulfill a customer's order or to refund them. That's just a super important um, part to, uh, to watch too. So make sure that you have your eye on that. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in on a Tuesday. I so appreciate all of you and um, I'm sure I will see you again another time. Stay warm if you're in North Dakota. Stay nice and warm. And Catherine, thank you so much for having me.